Hi, good morning. I'm a professor of psychology and I would like to talk with you in a sort of like uh, somewhat um, uh, relaxed setting about some of the big questions in psychology. I would like to talk about three big mysteries, big questions in psychology. Some of them, they are actually uh, uh, um, a disturbing topic. So if you feel uncomfortable with that, um, uh, look in the descriptions below. So we will talk about, first of all, um, about why some people are extremely uh, evil. Uh, we will talk about depression, why so many people are depressed. And third is actually more about cognitive psychology, about capacity of our memory. But I think these three topics are big questions. They're quite interesting. Uh, listen and uh, comment below what you think about them. So the first one is the question why it is possible that some people are so unimaginably evil. There has been a lot of research into this uh, in the field of psychology after the Second World War. Uh, you're reflecting on what happened during the Holocaust, during the Second World War. Uh, I recommend you to watch some of the videos, um, you know, if you can. I mean, it, it, is, it, is, it is really difficult to watch, but on the camp commanders of places such as Auschwitz, Dachau, Bergen-Belsen. The camp commanders are uh, unbelievable in the sense that they could, it's not only that they committed enormous crimes, they did so for years, uh, eagerly, willingly. And I found that that in and of itself is, is hard to understand. Psychologists can explain this, can say, well, look, like these sort of traits, they are normally distributed and you know, at the ends of the distribution, so to speak, you will have extremely bad people. But I think one of the questions that makes this more of a mystery to me is how it can be that these people were apparently having families and could, in other situations, be uh, apparently the loving parent. It's very hard to understand. And there are accounts of the children of the Nazis, for example, who have committed these crimes. Uh, and then you can get sort of like a, clim a glimpse into uh, their lives and you see that stark contrast and it's hard to explain for psychology because, you know, it's not just that they need to explain this sort of like as one dimension of being a really bad person, but that they also need to explain why these people could be, um, you know, relatively normal in other situations because they had children and they had lovers. Or, or, or wives. And by the way, it was not only that men committed these crimes. Uh, again, look on YouTube. You, there were also, uh, you know, similar crimes committed by women. People are clearly able to to do uh, horrific, horrific, horrific things. Um, so that is one of the big questions I think in psychology. Um, for psychologists, also, it's a difficult topic to engage with because even just reading these stories is is hard. The second mystery or problem that I would like to talk about in psychology is the occurrence of depression. Now, there are lots of different mental disorders and mental health issues that affect people, and you can say, well, some of them are very rare and they're difficult to explain. Now, depression is as you probably know, is the most common mental health problem. And I find it interesting that exactly that that is the most common mental health problem. And, and I think the mystery and the question is, why is that the case and why is that so common? Now, why do I think that that is a mystery? Well, I think depression is conceptually different from something like, say, anxiety. Anxiety is, by the way, also very common, but you can see that uh, anxiety, at the very least, is linked to a, uh, a protective function. So, of course, if you're too anxious that you can't function, that's not good. But uh, to be a little bit afraid of things is healthy because it protects you 
to, against taking extreme risks. You see often that people who take extreme risks and, uh, you know, like uh, maybe die while doing sort of like extreme mountaineering or wingsuit flying, those people probably have a relatively low, li uh, low level of anxiety. And because of that, they lack this protection against doing something that's extremely risky. Now, um, so anxiety can be explained. For depression, I think it's different. So you can't say, well, a little bit depression is good for you. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me, at least not conceptually. And, uh, and at the same time, depression is so common in society. Depression, of course, is also um, very difficult, actually, to, uh, to deal with. There, there have been different approaches to deal with depression and of course there are you know like there is uh medication you can take pills against depression but they have uh like so like side effects so for example withdrawal effects and so on uh there are psychological therapies against depression uh there are lifestyle things that can help against depression but you know on the whole uh look at my video about depression uh and the prevention of depression. I think it's, it's a fascinating topic in and of itself, but the big mystery is why is it so common and, and why is depression so common actually? And, and what where does it come from? Especially, and I should have said it earlier, I mean, the, the question is you have people who are healthy, they are wealthy, and they are well connected socially, and still they experience depression. You wonder why? What, what is it? You know, we live probably in the best time in history in many ways, right? So we're we have houses with technology. At least if you're if you live in the Western world in a developed nation, you know we have a good life. And yet depression is so common. So what is that? I think that's a big question for psychologists to answer, and a really important as well, one as well because depression is so common. The Final and third uh, mystery or question in psychology that I'd like to mention is about capacity and it's about memory. And I, I find and that is uh, not such a sad topic like the previous two. Uh, we know that some people can memorize tens of thousands of digits or words and they can remember them exactly as they are. And what so for example remembering the number pi or remembering the quran uh that's that's just just amazing now we know that these people are not special so it is not some sort of like um a unique thing that people's brain are really special the at least the consensus is that these people are normal and that in principle everybody can do this with enough training but i think then the big question for psychology is if, if that is the case, what is actually the real limit of our memory? So that, that's one question. And another question that you can ask is, uh, you know, do we, so why do we actually have that enormous capacity? Uh, given that we probably don't, we, you know, we don't really need it, you could argue. Now, I don't think we fully understand that, especially because it's so difficult to study, right? Because few people will do this. I mean, even though maybe everybody can manage to learn these really long sequences of digits or words, it takes an extreme level of exercise, uh, time and motivation to do so. But what is the limit? I, th I, th I think we, we don't really know. So there you have it. Uh, three mysteries, big questions. And I think it's these sort of uh, questions that make psychology such an attractive field of study because you, know, you can see this is fascinating. I mean, these are problems that we can all sort of like understand or think about. You, know, like you don't need to be a, a rocket scientist to understand these problems, as, as is often the case, say, in, in physics, where people also you know, say, oh, these are the three mysteries in physics, you know, which are often quite hard to understand and, and and they are not necessarily relevant to our daily life. So it's just like, you know, how large is the universe or something like that. This is psychology is about 
about our own lives, understanding ourselves and our fellow human beings. And that makes it a fascinating uh, science. And that's why I myself, well, often I think about these things and I wanted to share that with you. If you have any answers to what can explain this, uh, write it in the comments below. And also, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and uh, hopefully see you soon again.